across the wire on Friday night out is Switzerland's Ange Elusa. And then all of a sudden Saturday night, it might have been buried out there, but you had the tweet from Big Marcel24, Marcel Dorf, saying that in is the very recent, I'm talking two weeks hot off the press recent, LFA welterweight champ Trey Waters set to make his UFC debut against uh, Vanderlei Silva's gym guy. We're talking about Bushido, Josh Quinlan. And Matt, when it comes down to this matchup, Josh Quinlan, we said before, for his UFC debut. Man, this guy can crack. He bangs. Struggles with the takedown defense. And what happened in his first fight in the UFC? Struggled with the takedown defense. Popped up to his feet. Left hook. Knocked out Jason Witt cold. Sent him outside of the UFC. Thank you very much. So, for Josh oh, Quinlan, wow, he made a UFC debut to remember. And this is a guy that, listen, he got the win over on Contender Series back in 2021 to Josh Quinlan. Uh, he struggled with uh, some, some different USADA issues. So, it is what it is. But... Quinlan struggled with that after Dana White's Contender Series. Then he was supposed to take on Jason Witt, uh, and that fight had to be moved. So it was originally scheduled for Vegas, then it got moved to California because of uh, the DHCMT, the old metabolites there. So it was similar to the John okay. Jones situation. So they moved Quinlan from Vegas to California, and then he gets the win over Jason Witt about a week later. So now Quinlan gets this turn where he was originally supposed to be taking on 5'10", volume striking Angelusa at a Kill Cliff FC in a fight that would have been competitive. That would have been, been a really fun yeah, fight. Yeah, volume thought. from the outside, Alusa to can Quinlan throw his kicks and his power shots and close that distance, to now all of a sudden 5'10", to six foot five, Trey, Trey Waters, Waters who doesn't hold his hands up near his head like Angelusa, doesn't strike on the outside like Angelusa, and doesn't really have the same skill set whatsoever. And you might know Trey Waters from Contender Series this past summer. He was undefeated. He was taking on Gabriel Bomfim. Who's no scrub by any means. Yeah, like he was landing decent shots and kind of frustrating Bomfim. Bomfim goes double leg. Waters grabs the guillotine, holds on for too long. Von Flew choke for Gabriel Bomfim, who was the LFA welterweight champ. So then Waters goes back to the LFA. He goes out there uh, against a really, really tricky fighter. And it was a fun fight to rewatch. Again, a week and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, against Jalen Fuller back on the 14th of April. And in that fight, Fuller wins round one. Fuller's winning round two. And then all of a sudden, we have a straight left from Fuller, because he's a southpaw, and then a right cross from Waters that lands on top, and it drops Fuller like a sack of bricks, and it is all over. Second round knockout for Waters. So, again, I know we know Trey Waters, and the Fight Night Picks fans might know him fight. from Contender Series, but this is a really interesting matchup all of a sudden. Oh, 100%. I just... This is the weird thing about Josh Quinlan. Is he just another, like, Chaos Williams? Like, how far can having not a basic skill set, but having insane power, making guys really pay for getting close to you, but not really being able to have sort of the takedown defense and the overall volume to sort of match the rest of their games? I really like what I've seen out of Josh Quinlan. I was extremely impressed by that Jason Witt knockout. Like, that was one and, of the nicest knockouts you'll ever see. And Witt's one of those guys. If if he's well, if somebody's going to take you down in the welterweight division, it's going to be Jason Witt. We saw that against Barbarina. And if you're going to knock out anyone, in the welterweight division it's also probably wit but it will be interesting to see with how does trey waters deal with some of the rushes that quinlan's going to bring in because quinlan's a guy who likes to get settled at space and then rush in whereas waters is kind of weird he's big for the division he will have success up close he does have a really good clinch a really offensive clinch too which is weird for, for such big. a long guy but again, we've been talking about this a lot i feel like because ignacio bahamandez wasn't that long ago and i think there was another fighter recently who they kind of fit that archetype of hey we're really big we're very rangy but we get a lot of our work done up close and that's the thing about Waters that might not be his best best path to victory in this matchup because if he is far away from a guy like Quin Quinlan you're going to avoid some of the major implications that you'll face if you do start eating some of his shots but if you can maintain your range and sort of avoid the big shots I think Waters could have success I just I don't know how he's going to deal with some of those rushes of Quinlan if it's not with his grappling or with some big power shot down the middle and I mean both of these guys if you're looking for a high level fight out of a debuting fighter and a guy that's had one fight in the UFC. Quinlan was 6-0 and as an amateur, 6-0 and with the no contest being that contender series win where it was Drosten alone that caused him the issues and that's why it's a no contest. It was a first round knockout 
For Quinlan, so well schooled against a decent level of competition. For Trey Waters, seven and two with a no contest as an amateur, and already as a pro, he's seven and one. Lose that fight to Bonfim, but for Waters, the only trouble is a pro level competition combined opponent record before there, Bonfim yeah. was 13, 19, and one. So it wasn't necessarily there. He winds up on a lot of his punches. He has really low hands. Like if you saw Bobby Green last weekend, Trey Waters fits that type of. He keeps his hands either chest tight down by his side or he does a Philly shell and for Waters he just utilizes a lot of core movement and he moves his head quite a bit and we haven't necessarily seen him caught in many of these fights his takedown defense is good because he's so long up against the cage but when you look at it for a guy like Waters I mean his fight against Ramirez where he gets a submission win his fight against Benjamin Bennett where again we talked about it at the start of the show it took one knee for Patchy Mix that one knee from Trey Waters against Benjamin Bennett and Good he was night. completely out. And then the fight against Jalen Fuller. Lost the first round, was losing the second round. And all of a sudden, it was like Dan Hardy, Carlos Condit. Who's going to fall first? And it was Waters who landed that cross over the straight punch of a guy like Fuller. But going back and looking at it, Matt, I mean, Josh Quinlan coming from the one MMA fight team. If I, I won fight team MMA. And if you look at it for Trey Waters, he actually had Obi-Wan Shinobi the pillow. Stephen Kozlow in his corner on Contender Series. He trains out of Elevate MMA. That's Preston Parsons' gym. So you're going to get some of the some of the, the pummeling. You're going to get some of that grappling in. But he also trains at a Fusion XL, and I'm going to throw it up there right now. He was training with, I mean, you're going to have Philly Fresh there, for sure. Phil Rowe. Gerald Mearshart's been training out of there. But, but... Leota Machida. He's been training with Leota Machida to get ready for Jalen Fuller. That. Maybe that's where you got that counter shot. Matt, when we look at this fight, no odds on it because it just came out on Saturday night. No topology votes. Uh, Trey Waters, again, just fought about two weeks ago. So he's taking this one on short notice. But credit to him because 100%. he's a very good fighter, as is Gabriel Bonfim who beat him. So I'm glad to see Trey Waters in the uh, UFC. It's just going to be interesting to me because where Waters throws those big looping shots, we could get into a bit of a firefight. And I think there's two big X factors for both guys. For Trey Waters... You talk about flexible hips for a long guy. He gets those legs up there really quick for does, some of those yeah. head kicks. For Josh Quinlan... Man, his leg kicks are snappy, and he puts every fiber of his being into them. No, and I'm glad you brought up the leg kicks. I was just about to. If he is able to use the leg kicks and slow down the movement of Waters, Waters is going to have a hard time, I think. Waters is a good striker at range when guys are trying to walk in on him. He does have that kind of sniper-like ability to catch them as they're moving in range. But if it limits his movement because he has eaten a lot of leg kicks, and if he's just trying to avoid some of the big shots of Josh Quinlan, I think at a certain point he's going to zig when he should zag and probably eat a big hook. So I think it's a really volatile fight because Waters does have so much power himself. He's kind of a tall, thin guy, but if you get hit by him, you are going to get knocked out. I just slightly do favor Quinlan in this fight. Yeah, I mean, Waters... Waters moves so well in the octagon, utilizes that space. I mean, he's 0-1 in the apex, whereas Josh Quinlan's 1-0, but it's a no contest. And when you look at a guy like Quinlan, even in his fight against uh, Jennings, I went back and rewatched that one. And Michael Chiesa, I think it's in the second round, he goes, Quinlan looks so rigid and stiff. And, and then he goes on to say it's not a bad thing. But I wonder if the octagon jitters, if everything's kind of set aside, if Quinlan's able to really flow out there. Because when he does, he's such a good striker. And out of it, 12 of his 13 wins pro and amateur have ended by finish 8 of 12 in the first round. I have Josh Quinlan in the matchup. We'll see how that length and size plays a factor exactly. now going from a much shorter, more compact Ange Lusa to a bigger Trey Waters. You let us know down below in the comments section. If there's any fight that we need your help on, this is definitely it. So let us know down below who you have in the matchup. Some big fights left on this card. Song Yanong taking on Ricky Simone in that main event. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into, into it. it.